Last time on Left Behind. Dad, Patty scares me. It's, you have to believe in Jesus. What? It's the only answer. I told her we overheard her conversation. It made no difference. Why do we need religion at all when we have you to worship? The young. You deserve it. You are a god. Sir, does that money belong to anyone else? Legally, I mean? No. And you have access to it? Uh, I have a shovel. Is everything okay? Huh. No major problems. Oh, no. Chloe, what did I say? So what's the minor problem? Based on Apollyon, the fifth book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents Episode 60 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. Where are you? You've been gone for hours. Got sidetracked at the hospital with your friend, Bo. He had a lot of questions. What about Ernie? Discharged this morning. Bo says Hattie's been talking with him. Great. What's up? It's Chloe. She's not feeling that well. What's her complaint? Shortness of breath, extreme fatigue. I'll be there as soon as I can. Lay her flat so her lungs can expand. Can you hook up the fetal monitor? If it's important, I'll figure it out. It's important. Call me with the results in 10 minutes. Okay. Hmm. Dad, what's wrong? Nothing, just lay back. I'm just having a hard time finding... No. No. There it is. Okay, now, what do you do? Just count and multiply? Or... I, I don't know. Hmm. Do you think it's slowed down? Well, no way to tell unless we get this readout. Dad? There. there. Uh... Okay, I'll call the doc. Concentrate more on Chloe than the baby. All right, all right. I want her to breathe deeply and get all the oxygen she can. She's, she's panting. She says it's hard to get any kind of breath. You gotta slow her down, or she won't get the oxygen she needs. That, that the baby needs. No, I'll try. We got another problem. What's that? I'm being followed. What? Are you sure? No question. I've taken several detours and I can't shake well, it. What kind of car? Motorcycle. One of those little jobs they race off road. I don't want to give away our location, but I need to get this oxygen to Chloe. Well, try to shake him. I'll take care of her until you get here. Yeah, I'm low on fuel, too. <sighs> what else can happen? How close are you to Pelwaukee? Pretty close. Well, go there. I'll call T. He'll gas you up, and maybe the bike won't follow you into the hangar. I'm on my way. What's the guy following him look like? Can't tell. All he knows is it's a motorcycle. Uh-oh. What? Ernie's a bike racer. He probably followed your man from the hospital. I wonder why. <sighs> Hattie. He's trying to find out where she's staying. Well, if your doc reads Ernie here, we can take care of it, guaranteed. Thanks, T. We'll, we'll talk to you. Here. Let's scoot down some if you can and raise your arms up over your head. Yeah, that'll open your lungs more. Okay. Mm. That feels a little... Oh. What? What? She got to look at me. Hattie. It's been ages since you've been up here. I wanted to see how my godchild was doing. I'm not here yet. We'll let you know. And I wanted to tell you that I'm not jealous. Jealous? Uh, uh... I just lost my baby. You get to have yours. You're lucky. I'm not. Story of my life. We're... Sorry for your loss, Hattie. Yeah. It, it has to be painful. Painful. <laughs> yes. Painful. It will be painful for someone. There you are. Is she okay? She's resting a little. Hattie, what are you doing outside? Oh, just getting some air. Better than being locked in the cellar. 
where you put me. You were screaming, Hattie, and the door wasn't locked. <sighs> Doc's in love with me, Rayford. Pardon me? He wants to keep me here, like a bird in a... Oh, you know, that, that thing. Cage? Yeah, that. <laughs> what gives you that idea? Oh, a woman knows, Rayford. He told you all about it, didn't he? Why do you ask? <laughs> I knew it. Tell him I'm not interested. Do you have any cigarettes? What? He had a crush. I'm sure you've chased him away by now. So, he got the picture? It's not like we talk about it. Does he know you and I had an affair? An affair? Hattie, we both know nothing ever happened. Only because a bunch of people disappeared. And you started feeling guilty and got all churchy on it. You know, I'm going back inside. I still make you nervous, don't I? In so many ways. <laughs> well, isn't that exciting? Name one. All right. How about your obsession with this kid at the airport? Ernie? I want to meet him, that's all. Did you tell him where we are and how to get here? I don't even know where we are. Where are we, Ray? Did you tell him Floyd was coming to the hospital? Why? Did you? Um, I might have. <sighs> that was pretty stupid. So what's the plan? His buddy Bo pretends to have questions, distracts Floyd long enough for Ernie to get his bike and follow him here? You're a regular Sherlock Holmes. He's a teenager, and you're <laughs> acting like one. If you want to see this kid so bad, why don't you ask one of us to take you there? Because Floyd is jealous. Ernie's coming here to what? Get acquainted? I got a date. Do you know he faked being a believer to get next to Ken? Mm. You knew about that too, didn't you? Well, truth is, Rayford, the other men in my life are getting boring. <laughs> you two would make a great couple. You never answered my question. What question? Do you have any cigarettes? Ha you don't smoke. I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. Hattie, go back inside, please. Is Ernie coming? Floyd's got oxygen that Chloe desperately needs. But instead of coming right back, he's running around trying to lose your little friend. I hope you're happy. Ray, Chloe's in trouble? Yeah, she's in trouble. Floyd has his phone with him, right? Yeah. Call him. We don't have Call time. Call him! I'll fix this. Yeah. It's Ray. Did you make it? Just got here. He didn't follow me into the airport. Met up with T. We're thinking of switching cars and seeing if the kid will follow him. Good idea, but Hattie wants to talk to you. Doc. Yeah, Hattie? Listen, just let me have a word with Ernie. Just hold the phone out the window of the car and stop. Try him on Delante's phone in about five minutes. Mr. Williams, it appears I have been going too fast. Uh, what's that? I have been going too fast. Well, what's wrong with being ahead of schedule? I burned more fuel than I planned. We'll need to stop in New York. Uh, just give me a home. Where are you going to put down? The party is not in any shape. I know a place. We'll be in Palatine in two hours. Let's see. Seven o'clock Chicago time now. If we're on the ground by nine, I could make it to the safe house by ten. Oh, hang in there, Chloe. Um... You, you all right, sweetie? Yeah. Uh, I'm just exhausted. Steel. Ray, it's Doc. We switched the oxygen to T's Jeep. I'm on my way. How's our girl? Uh, uh, yes. You're, you're right there with her? Yeah, correct. How is she on a scale of one to ten, one being worse? Um, uh, five. I've asked for another fetal pulse, but there's nothing I can do until I get there. What's happening with T? Biker took the bait, but uh -huh. he's going to recognize T pretty quick. All right, just hurry. What was going on? Doc got stalled. Uh, he's, he's coming with the oxygen. Good. My baby's going to be all right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. if, if you keep breathing deeply until the O2 gets here. Hattie's outside again. I, I'm going to get some air. Give me some, too. <laughs> Just do it, Ernie. Prove you're a man. I mean it. <sighs> Cooled his jets. Yeah? 
How? Well, I, I just told him this situation and that it was stupid for me to ask him to come here. What's he going to do now? Go home, I guess. Hmm. He lives at the airport. Well, that's what I mean. Home at the airport. Oh, excuse me. Steel. Yeah, it's T. Our friend Ernie turned uh, three shades of red when he found out I was driving. <laughs> he started to scoot, but I told him your girlfriend's on the phone. She really must have read him the riot act. All he did was apologize and say yes a dozen times. Well, she claims she told him to back off. Well, Doc's long gone. So Ernie's had options anyhow. He headed back to the hangar. At least he said he did. Uh, you busy tonight, T? Well, I let everybody go home. I was going to handle Buck's arrival. We took a message out of New York that they refueled and should be here by 9. You know they're in a Tomcat. A fighter? You're kidding. Uh, that's what it says. Huh. Anyway, what do you need? Keep an eye on Ernie. I don't trust him or Hattie. Well, what can he do? He doesn't know where you are. Uh, he might follow me when I pick up Buck. Who knows? Got it. If he's around when Buck lands, I won't let him out of my sight. Abdullah, you've got to know how much I appreciate this. Anytime, my friend. How are we looking on that nine local touchdown? Everything on schedule? We are okay, Mr. Williams. We will need a place to sleep. Well, I think you can sack out at the airport. I'd invite you to our place, but we're in hiding, and it's pretty crowded. I need very little. Just a place to sleep and a place to plug in. Your computer? Yes. Dr. Ventura. I try not to miss the daily teaching. My friends, as we come to the end of this suffering caused by the locusts, it is time to look ahead. Trumpet judgment number six is next. Whatever we have suffered, all will pale in comparison to this worst judgment yet. An army of 200 million horsemen will slay a third of the world's population. Only one-fourth of the people left behind at the rapture will survive until the glorious appearing. I am not afraid of death but I pray every day that God will allow me the privilege of seeing him return to earth to set up his kingdom. If he takes me before that, I will be reunited with my family and other loved ones. But oh, the joy of being here when Jesus arrives. Take comfort, dear ones. He is coming. I'll get the tanks, Doc. Go check on her. Leave the other machine in the car for now. All right. She needs O2 first. Okay. I, I'm here, Chloe. You feel any better? Not really. Oh, no. What's wrong? Okay, listen. We're all going to have to work together. I need as clean an environment as I can get. Hattie, come in here. I want you to start a big pot of water. Hattie! Let her go. I'll do whatever you need done. Am I going to have the baby tonight? Before Buck gets here? Not if I can help it. But your job is to be quiet. Don't talk unless you have to. But I have to know everything right now. Tell her, Doc. <laughs> All right, get the O2 on her. Chloe, there's been a significant decrease in the fetal pulse. I don't have the equipment to check on the position of the cord, and I don't want to do a C-section. A ride to Young Memorial wouldn't be medically advisable. Medically advisable? You mean the ride might kill me? Well, it's a moot question. You're not going. Now, the best thing you can do is lay back and be quiet. All right. On three, we lift her carefully onto the table. Careful. One, two, three. So much for dignity. Quiet now. We don't want to wake Junior before his birthday party. How will you decide whether an emergency cesarean is necessary? If the baby's heart slows too much or stops. Just try to wait for Buck. I'll hold off as long as I can. Now breathe. Sorry. Breathe. What happens when I have to leave for the airport? You can't. I need you here. So you want me to ride with this guy, T? Right. He'll pick up his car here and drive back and make sure you're not followed. It's a long story. Is it somebody specific? T will tell you. It's a kid who lives right there at the airport. Probably on a dirt bike. All right. Well, my pilot, Abdullah, is staying at the airport. I'll get him to keep an eye out. Abdullah? You're, you're flying with Abdullah Smith? Uh, well, yeah. I didn't know you knew him. Put him on. Uh, all right. Hold on. Hey, Abdullah, it's... Ray Steele on the landline. Rayford Steele? Abdullah, good to talk to you. Look, no time for a chat, though. The airport you're inbound to, I need you to keep a guy there. No problem. Give me the details. 
No time now. Check with a guy named T. He'll be meeting you. He will go nowhere. What's your ETA? 14 minutes. Good. Thanks, Abdullah. How we doing, Doc? We have to induce. But I can start her slow and give Buck plenty of time. Fetal pulse is not critical yet, but it will be in an hour. I, I'd start the drip if it was my call. She's pointing to you. That means it's your call. All right. Let's get started. Small airport. Yeah, it wasn't too small for you, Abdul. <laughs> I could land on an envelope and not cancel the stamp. Okay. <laughs> oh, you must be T. Buck. Glad to meet you. Yeah, you Abdullah, too. Rafer told me about you. I hope he was truthful. Uh, let me show you to your room, next to Ernie. Here, here's my cell number in case something comes up. I will call only if there is good reason. Here, you guys had some excitement. Well, not as much as you're about to have. How much further? Uh, almost there. Hey, did you just see anything behind us? What? I don't see anything. <sighs> well, I thought I saw a bike back there. Well, probably your imagination. Nobody drive on this road without a light. All the same, I'll call Abdullah. Make sure he's still got his foot on Ernie. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe you better. Six minutes to ten. You made pretty good time. Cameron, Doc, come quickly. Okay. In, in here. Thanks, Doc. Bye, oh, yeah. Chloe. Glad you oh. could make it, stranger. Oh, hold yeah, up, I hold got... up. First things first. Wash up. Oh, right, right. Oh, thank you. I wouldn't want to miss this. I would like to pray too, Cameron. Yeah, I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> but I'm really glad you were here. Oh, uh, doctor, right. you have a waiver on closing your eyes. Almighty God, we are grateful for your goodness and your protection. Thank you for bringing Cameron to us and just in time. We know we have no claim on your sovereign will, but we plead for a safe delivery, a perfect baby, and a healthy mother. We need this tiny ray of sunshine in a dark world. Grant us this, O oh Lord, but above all, we seek your will. Hattie. What, Hattie? what about Hattie? Ray, I'll, I'll be fine with Buck and Seal on here. Go. Rover's gone, Ray. No, great. We'll take the Jeep. Hey, Floyd, your keys. Seal, my right pants pocket. You'll have to wash again. Rayford. Catch. Got him. Hurry. You hit the cycle when you came out? Yeah, Ernie followed you after all. That's impossible. We called Abdullah. Ernie was still there. Buck did think he saw something a couple of times, though. Maybe Ernie got the drop on Abdullah and made him say that. Well, he was pretty convincing. Small talk details the whole bit. Doesn't sound like Abdullah. Hello? Did I wake you? No. Why? Listen, just answer yes or no. Is Ernie still there? Yes. What's he doing? Digging. Why? I've attached the fetal monitor to the baby's head through the uterus. You can do that? Buck. Uh, of course you can do that. <laughs> it's as accurate a reading as we can get, so I'm encouraged. We are going to have a baby tonight, and it's going to be all right. So, Ernie really is a gold digger. And I bet you dollars to donuts <laughs> we'll find out neither of them... Uh, uh, hang on, T. Leah, this is Rayford Steele. Do you remember me? What now? We just need to know if a patient's still there. Name's Bo something. Just a minute. T, what's a Bo? Beauregard name? Hansen. Yeah. We don't get a lot of Bo's, you know. Yeah, he's still here. You're sure? I suppose you want me to check? Would you? I've done more than that for you guys in the past. And that's why we love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Good. That looks fine. This couldn't have waited, but the pulse is steady and has been for a while. We're going to be okay. You doing all right, Mom? Yeah. And can I push? Just hang on. He's gone? Cleared out. That's okay. I didn't like him anyway, or that kid who was in the same room. He disappeared earlier today without a word, so I guess I'm not surprised. We owe you one, Liam. One? <laughs> Touche. Someday we'll make this all up to you. <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing in five years or so. Dad could be here. Ah, oh, he might make it back on Doc, what's your guess on timing? I don't want to rush her. Sometimes even a moderate drip will cause fast action. All depends on mother and child. But we're still doing well, and that's what counts. Amen. Can you believe this? These idiots don't even know they've been followed. 
Rover's in front of Ken's hut. Uh, Abdullah can take care of himself, but he's outnumbered. Well, let's see what they're up to. Yeah, move over by the window. You give me a brick of gold bullion for flying you to New Babylon. That's the deal, Cat. And this gold belongs to you? Actually, to my fiancé. And this young man here is your fiancé? Yes, I am. And I'm Santa Claus, too, as soon as I hand you this gold. Got a deal? Do you realize that this gold is worth ten times the cash I would charge you for the same flight? Call it an expedite fee. And we kind of need to expedite, if you know what I mean. If you want to go now, you pick the wrong pilot. I cannot fly for 24 hours. Says who? International aviation law. Carpathia rescinded international air laws. I know. I used to work for him. As I understand it, ma'am, you did more than that for him. Yeah, I helped him with his homework. What's your point? Hmm, just wondering how many fiancés you have. Well, you are just full of interesting questions, aren't you? Here's how it's going to work. Take Come with me. I'm gonna call Abdullah. Got an idea. Go ahead, man. Hello. Abdullah, don't say anything. It's Rayford. Just repeat after me, all right? Yes. Global community militia. Global community militia. A stolen Range Rover. A stolen Range Rover. Gold. Gold. Prison. Prison. Yes, you can come and question me, but all the gold is here and the automobile too. Yes, you can come and question me, but all the gold is here and the automobile too. No, I don't want to go to prison. I assure you, sir, I have no interest in going to prison. So is Rayford Hardy, wait! Nice try, Hattie. You can't keep me here. Come on. Ugh. Maybe we can get her back before the baby arrives, team. <sighs> Bear down hard. <sighs> right there. <sighs> hey, that's it. Good. Chloe, you're almost there. I can, I can see the baby's head. All right, the head's off. You still feel the contraction? I don't know. I don't know anymore. Well, then just wait. Wait for another one. Oh, you're doing great, honey. It'll be all right. Oh, you should see his little face. Oh, he's got... He's got this little... All right. Here it comes. Good. Now one more big push. Oh, come on, honey. Come on. You have a beautiful song. Oh, he's so perfect. Praise be to God. In the midst of your judgments, you give life to your servants. Here, here, Dad, why don't you cut the cord? Uh, really? <laughs> right here. Okay. Here you go, Mom. Hey, Dad. Look at what we got. <laughs> Hi there, little guy. Hey, uh, hey, Rayford. Hey, here you go, Granddad. Oh. Oh. What's his name? Dad? Mm -hmm. uh, meet Kenneth Bruce. Well, Hi. I like that a lot. Hi, old man. Hi. Hello, Kenneth Bruce. My grandson. Oh. It's nice to finally meet you. <laughs> Left behind. The dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Apollyon by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustine. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening.